Code Education, and today we're going to look at a, an HVAC change out. This system is a split system, which means that the, one of the components is going to be in the, in the uh, house, that's an uh, air handler and furnace, and then the condenser and compressor are going to be located outside. We're going to go ahead and start inside up in the attic and take a look at the, the air handler and the furnace. Before we start the inspection, I'll just go over some of the components. We have the return air plenum that the return air duct is connected to. Here we have the air handler and the gas furnace. We can tell it's gas because it has flexible gas um, pipe connector and a flue. We have the evaporator coil, which is what removes heat from the house. Underneath the evaporator coil, because we create condensate, um, is a drain pan, which is connected to the condensate drain and the condensate overflow. We have the refrigerant lines that are connected to the evaporator coil, and then finally we come to the the supply plenum that has the supply ducts. One of the things that I noticed while I'm looking here is there's actually a hole right here in the supply plenum. I believe it was used by the installer to test the airflow. That's something that needs to be sealed up and we'll, we can uh, make sure that we write that down as a correction. I should point out that the code requires a 20 by 30 attic access minimum. It has to be at least large enough to re um, remove the material or the equipment and uh, reinstall it. It's also a requirement for a light with the switch being located right at the access opening. Uh, there's also a requirement for, for a um, convenience receptacle. So we're gonna look at the utility connections, the venting, and all those uh, refrigerant lines. So we'll start off with the gas line. We have a flexible connector. This one is installed correctly. It has hard pipe coming out of the, the air handler cabinet. You can see that there's sharp edges there and that's why we don't want the, the flexible um, gas connector installed through the cabinet. And we also have a shutoff valve. This installation is actually missing the sediment trap which is supposed to be downstream from the shutoff valve. Also I would probably um, ask that they they support this gas pipe better and rather than cantilever it looks like about three feet cantilevered. Uh, we look at the, the dual dual wall B vent, which is required inside of an attic. You can't use single wall in an attic. And we would go ahead and look for a minimum one inch clearance per the manufacturer's insulation instructions. We also have our refrigerant lines, one that is insulated, one that is not required to be insulated. One thing I think is important to check is the condensate um, drain and overflow. They're required to have eighth inch per foot fall and this, this attic has blown in insulation and sometimes the insulators get a little sloppy and they get insulation in the pan. We want to make sure that it's clear of insulation so it doesn't clog the condensate drain. Uh, we can see that the unit is cord connected to the uh, convenience receptacle. Um, and also, per the code, that we're required to have 30 by 30 access in front of the control side of the unit. And you can see this, this um, platform is designed um, for uh, a fur attic furnace and so we have plenty of room here it complies with that 30 by 30 requirement. Okay we're back outside at the compressor and condenser and uh, so a couple of things you want to take a look at as we approach this unit. One we can see that uh, it's actually sitting in a hole it's supposed to be three inches above grade and this one's uh, a little depressed so that should be lifted up. Um, there's also a requirement most manufacturers require that you have 12 inches clearance around at least three sides and, and when you have two located next to each other typically they're going to be spread apart 24 inches. We want to go ahead and take a look at the nameplate rating. This, this unit says that the minimum circuit ampacity is 18.7 uh, amps so it needs at least a 20 amp breaker um, but it says maximum circuit ampacity is 30 amps so when we go and take a look at the panel we don't want to see a, a breaker that's larger than 30 amps. Uh, we want to go ahead and check the, the disconnect. This one, sometimes we have fuses located here at the disconnect. This one just has a simple pull out. Um, when, you, when you check these, make sure you put them back and make sure you put them back in the right way. If you put them in upside down, it'll be off. And then the homeowner will call the HVAC contractor and tell them that it doesn't work anymore and it end up being your fault if that's the case. So uh, we can also see that there's our refrigerant line connections here. And if you can see these way down here, these are our tamper-proof ports so that people can't get in and, um, and access the refrigerant. 
I think that's about all we're going to look at here. We're going to go ahead now and take a look at the panel to make sure that our ampacity is correct for this unit. Okay, we're out at the panel now. We're going to check to make sure that the circuits are appropriately sized. Here's the AC circuits, two pole circuit, and it is a 30 amp. Remember, we need at least 20 amp, but not to exceed 30. Most contractors install the largest breaker they can because it reduces their call outs. Uh, you can also see that we have the forced air unit, which is what we looked at up in the attic, and that's on a 20 amp dedicated circuit. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like our videos, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Any comments or questions you might have, you can comment below. We can also be reached at our website or our Facebook page. The link to our website is below. Thanks.